So building out a camper van can be a crazy difficult experience, especially if you don't really have an eye for design, like me. But luckily, I really like how our Sprinter van layout came out. We have tons of floor space, which even allows me to do yoga inside our van. Well, you might be feeling stumped as to how to lay out your camper van conversion. And in this episode, I chat with professional van builder Steven Stolp, who has some great tips on how to plan out your van's layout and how to apply your creative vision to your dream home on wheels. Let's go. Hey there, I'm Kristen Haynes with TheWaywardHome.com, and I spend half the year in my camper van and half on my sailboat in Mexico. My goal is to inspire you to pursue your nomadic living dreams. So we've been building out our Sprinter van for a couple of years now. It's off and on, really, because we spend a lot of time south on the border on our sailboat in Mexico. But the van is coming along really nicely, and I just love being inside our van. Even though it's not quite finished, it's still a great place to sleep, live, work, and cook. My van feels just like home, and I even prefer living in it to living in a house, which I'm doing right now just for a week or so. If you're also building out a van and wanting some layout tips, this episode is for you. This interview first appeared as part of the Van Life Virtual Summit I put on with Project Van Life. So Stephen, first of all, tell us about yourself and what led you to start building vans. Well, as you said, I am Stephen Stolp. I am proud owner of Stolp Solutions and Sandy Vans. Basically, I got into van building kind of as an accident. Um, I converted an ambulance randomly one year and it got a lot of positive feedback on the good old internet. So before I knew it, after I graduated business school, um, I had a long list of people wanting me to build geared ambulances for them. And then I got well known in the ambulance community, which now propelled me into the Mercedes Sprinter community. So. Very cool. So you mostly work on, so you only work on Sprinters now? Um, yes. Yeah. So Sandy Vans is a Mercedes Sprinter, like 144 wheelbase only. And um, I kind of had to pull in on something because when I first started, I was just like, yes, yeah, so I will build you a rocket ship and didn't have enough planning that went into that. Like the bills turned out great, but it wasn't a sustainable business for me. So that is why I'm going with Sandy Vans. Very cool. And tell me a little bit about why you chose to go with the Sprinter over the other vans. So, um, well, I'm down in San Diego, so the market definitely dictated that. If I was in some like, you know, backwoods kind of country or Colorado or something like that, I probably would have done great at continuing the four by four off-road ambulances that I was creating. Um, but yeah, just strictly based off market, being able to take care of my family, I'd I decided to do Mercedes Sprinters. Very cool. So tell me a little bit about designing uh, van build interiors. Um, that's, you know, that's a difficult task. <laughs> what, what are some things that, that you have in, in your head before you start on a, on a new van and the interior layout? I have this weird snapshot that happens that, that in the end, um, I, I look at the van after it's done and I'm like, it's like kind of deja vu. So that's, I know that's a really weird way to describe it, but you know, creatives are kind of weird people. Um, but basically I just kind of, I get the layout and I, I think about how the ceiling is going to work with the cabinets and the, and the wall material and, and the counters. And I, I could kind of all see it at once. So my biggest challenge when I first started build is like telling people what I see, um, as far as the entire vision. So. Um, I ha I don't do SketchUp or anything. I'm definitely a pencil or paper kind of guy, but uh, yeah, it, it really helps to have a customer that trusts me or, you know, my, my build team that, that knows that I'm going to direct them in the right path. Yeah, for sure. And so if someone's building out their own van and they have ideas in their head, how do they narrow in on a, a layout? Do you have any tips for like, like translating the ideas into an actual layout? Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's, I keep it very simple. Um, I just literally go through the van after I put the subfloor and the, the laminate flooring down, I go through and just take masking tape and tape everything off. And I kind of just stand around and, and navigate it and see, you know, you got to have butt room. You got to have, you know, your, I even tape on the walls and stuff so I know where all the cabinetry is. And I just kind of go in there. It looks like a little bit of a mess in the beginning with, with masking tape, but um, that really helps you visualize where everything's going to go. 
but that's yeah that that's what i would recommend that's what i did in the beginning i don't do that stuff anymore but um as a diy it's just much easier to visualize it if you have that physical representation right in front of you yeah and i've heard some people say that you should go and like live in the van before building it out or at least go try it and see what it feels like do you have any recommendations about that knowing what you want is very important especially if you're going in to hire somebody like me or build your van yourself um i definitely sorry look he, he wants to be in front of the camera for whatever reason um but yes it's very important knowing what you want so some people they're just like i want the sink here i want an oven here i want this and that's great for a builder um i've been in situations where people were not clear on what they wanted as a layout and one time it didn't go so well because they didn't know what they wanted. Um, so I really strongly recommend you go in, you go camping with it, or you hang out in another person's van or you rent a van um, and figure out the things that you truly want before you start any sort of process. Right. That makes a lot of sense. So people should um, think about like their lifestyle and what components they need. Um, what should they be like thinking about when deciding what to put in the van? Well, um, preacher comforts, you know, I, I could go pitch a tent in the woods just about anywhere. So my personal van, very, very bare bones, simple. It just has a whole lot of cheetah print on the inside. And that's what I like. Um, but yeah, so if you're kind of more of a bougie individual and you live in like a high rise in downtown, you're probably going to want, you know, heated floors and and a, a shower inside and all that stuff. But um, if you're trying to get more in punch with nature, you may decide to do an outdoor shower or things like that. You just really got to hone in. This kind of goes back to our previous subject of knowing what you want. Um, and pretty easy to discover that quickly if you're not okay with just the Planet Fitness membership to go shower and, and stuff like that, so. Yeah, what are some like common questions you get from people trying to decide on their layout? I'm sure you work with them to try to hone in on their vision. What kinds of amenities do people typically like want or ask for? I mean, I, I've done things as far as uh, a bamboo steam room inside of an ambulance for an athlete. So I've had questions like all the way over there. I've had people want to put you know big giant sofas in the middle of their bands and, and all sorts of stuff and and it's really the responsibility of the builder or yourself to to know what works and don't hone in on one thing like if you're like i absolutely have to have this then before you know it you have an entire build based off that one attribute that you probably could have sacrificed so it's it's good to Take everything into consideration and not get tunnel vision on this one thing. That's what I do see a lot. I see a lot of people say, I want an oven and a floor to ceiling fridge and a shower and this and that. And then, and then when it's done, they're like, oh, it, it feels cramped in here. It's like, well, back to the masking tape. Um, but yeah, so yeah, just knowing what you want and being practical about your ideas because it is a band. It's not. You, you can't look at this like a five-star hotel. I'll make it look like a five-star hotel, but it's still it's still got to bounce down the road. It's still got to be strong, and it's got to be practical. Totally. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that because I do see a lot of luxury, you know, looking vans, and I have heard stories of when they're not built correctly, they can kind of break apart, especially if you want to go down bumpy roads. Have you, um, uh, like, what do you think about that, and how do you ensure that components are, like, not going to fall apart? So upper cabinets are definitely one of those scary ones that I see a lot with um, people's builds. I'll like see in videos, it's like kind of like hanging from the ceiling. And I'm like, you have like a, you have a child in the back of your van and you have like cabinets hanging up the ceiling. So um, yeah, securing cabinets and things like that is very important because um, you have to basically create an earthquake proof home and not just earthquake earthquake proof like constant earthquake that's how you have to treat it all so you know securing your cabinetry down properly i mean that can that could kill somebody so that's why as builder i try to when i do see issues i don't i don't give unsolicited advice but when people reach out to me i usually just like hey like drop it off to my shop i'll, I'll fix all that for you 
Um, but as far as the sandy vans go, we tie all of cabinetry into frame that Mercedes provides us. So you could rest assured that none of that's going to come down. Um, I've seen inadequate like drywall screws holding cabinets up and, and things like that. And it's just very dangerous. So I do recommend people know a thing or two about fastening and glue and all that stuff before they go ahead and take on a van. Yeah, for sure. And I, I'm, I'm still intrigued by you building a steam room in someone's van. Uh, that's very interesting and creative. What, what other interesting like components have you put in vans that might be surprising to people? Oh yeah. So this one called Amber, um, some of you may have seen it on the interwebs. I did a van tour with Jared Tochi. I hope I said that right, Jared, your friends. Um, we did a tour and that had an RFID gun safe um, inside of it that it looked like regular cabinetry and you swiped a card on the shelf of the, on the bottom shelf of the cabinet and then the entire hatch dropped open and it, it was like illuminated. It was like this long, um, obviously requested by the client. And... Um, yeah, that, that was a really cool feature. I've, I've gotten a lot of emails about, you know, people like, Hey, let me, let me, uh, get one of those gun safes in my van. And I'm just all like, well, that's, that's a custom job. Um, my very first van I did though, was a Ford transit. I called the pandemic and it's cause I built it during the pandemic and that had a Murphy or not a Murphy bed. It had a robotic bed that folded into the ceiling. So it literally, like, as it lowered, it pushed into the wheel or into the window wells. And then when you had to go up, it folded into the ceiling. And it wasn't a happy jack. It wasn't anything like that. It was literally like a $200 thing I bought off Amazon and, and made it work. So those are some of the cool ones. Um, made robotic Murphy beds before. Um, lots of weird electronics. A lot of people know me for my light features that I do as well. So it's kind of across the boards. Cool. So what are your light features? What do those look like? Um, so I, I got into van building because before I was into furniture making, I was like kind of working a lot with epoxy and fully winging it. I had like no formal training or anything, but I mean, I was selling coffee tables for a good buck and. I would, I mean, I've done light features where the, uh, like the actual epoxy has lights cut into the bottom of it and like walk into the van and all the countertops turn on because they're like on motion sensors and they're blocked. So if you're sleeping, they won't set off, but just like, you know, a mixture between like electronics and art has always been very cool to me. So that's why I really enjoy kind of messing with lights. I, I do like the strip lighting through, through the ceiling and it's all diffused and everything. And it looks indirect, um, which that is a scalable design that you will be seeing in more Sandy vans moving forward. But, um, yeah, my favorite light feature I did though, was I did tire epoxy edge on a counter and it looked like the ocean crashing onto and I hand carved out like sandbars and stuff like inside. And then I poured the mold and it wasn't just a straight counter either. It was all like, it, it was curved and everything. And then I put blue inside of it that was fully diffused. So then when it turned on, it just looked like a glowing blue ocean, like crashing onto a wood countertop. And it wasn't something that the customer asked for. Um, it was just something that I felt like adding to the van. That's really cool. And that's inspiring for people that people can be creative and artistic when, when building out vans, it sounds like. Um, is there anything they should keep in mind surrounding the, the artistic uh, part of a van build? Um, yeah. So careful also with the artistic stuff because you could hone in on one artistic design or like, like if you want like a wall in a certain spot that correlates with something, if you, if you tunnel in on stuff too much with the art, 
you're just going to build your band around one piece of art, which if that's what you're trying to do, that's cool. But um, beware of trying to incorporate one thing into your entire band. Um, but I think the best way to go about that stuff is to kind of piecemeal it out and, and figure out, like have solution-based creativity. So while you're doing something, you're like, oh, if I add a piece here, it may like hide this imperfection or it may, you know, make this look better rather than from the beginning knowing exactly what kind of art you're going to put in there. Because everything that I just described to you in the previous question was on the fly. It was, I was inside the band and I was like kind of feeling the flow of it. And I'm like, okay, well, if this goes here and that goes here, it'll look amazing. And, and I think that that is best way to harness your creativity inside one of these builds. Yeah, yeah, totally. And you mentioned you work on 144 wheelbase, and that's what I have as well. And there's only so much you can shove into that. You were saying that some people want so much that they have like no room um, inside. Um, <laughs> and I'm just curious, like, how do you balance like luxury with, with the space to move around? So with Sandy Van specifically, um, we're doing modular, like, so this, the whole back half of this band be kind of configured however you want, because it's based off, you know, all of the custom jobs that I've done in, in my past with Stolp Solutions, and it's combined into this 144. Um, one of the things that I really like about the modular design is because typically when you go camping and stuff, there's a lot of setup. But if you have a van that's designed to be set up and taken down, it's not very inconvenient. If I've lived in a Sandy van full time and it has a king size bed in the back, but it also has dining for eight. So I think keeping the modular aspect of the thing in a 144 specifically is very important. If you do a fixed bed, you're really kind of stuck with that. Um, but some people, want to be that way if you want more then you need to get a bigger band but i personally like the 144s because i don't mind taking 45 seconds to set up my bed um after having seven homies sitting down with me in the same location so cool yeah give me some more some examples of the modular so that's just with the is it a bed couch conversion or what are some of your modular components so the table is just a simple U-bench dinette. It's it's a very popular design um, that a lot of companies have already done. I don't think it's anybody's idea to steal at this point. Um, but yeah, it's, it's as simple as the table drops in and then there's another leap. And then that full back half of the, actually more than the back half of the van, burns into a king size bed. And um, I'm currently working on having the ability to take benches out as well, and then having um, a bench platform that can attach to the L track that is already installed in the Sandy Vans that um, can be a fixed bed across. So then the customer has the ability to customize the modular portion of the design for themselves. So I don't have to sit there with a pen and paper for hours trying to pick my client's brain anymore. This is, you know, I'm kind of trying to make the Swiss army knife of a band. Yeah, that's a great point to do the modular so people can configure it how they want. And then there are so many options. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, there's right now. I mean, there's at least like 30 different configurations. So. Yeah. Yeah. Are you seeing that most people want like a bathroom and a shower inside? I know that again, the 144s are small. Um, what are you seeing surrounding that? So toilets are, are obviously a lot of people really want toilets in, in their van. Um, the reason I separate toilet from bathroom, because, you know, I, I try to steer as many people as I can away from having a wet bath inside their van, because I am big fan of like old school vehicles and I've had old RVs and and all sorts of stuff. And every single one of them has mold, mildew, all that stuff in the wet bath area. So it does not matter how talented you are at installing, um, how much you waterproof things. It, at some point, water will get in places that you do not want it. 
Um, it could be three years, it could be 10 years, but eventually it will happen. So to increase the longevity of your build, I strongly recommend outdoor shower solutions and things like that. And if you're kind of worried about the cold, well, I've had a diesel heater cranking in one of the sandy vans, blowing heat out the back. And I was taking a shower, like in the snow, um, out the back. I had a curtain and everything, but, uh, but yeah, so you can take an outdoor shower even if it's cold out. That's true. That's only what we do. So I highly recommend it. <laughs> and so what are some of your like outdoor shower um, options that, that people can, can put? Well, I mean, outdoor showers, if it's sprinter, it's probably the easiest thing to do. You run a hot water line to the back. I mean, I usually run hot and cold, so we find a mixer. Um, but yeah, you just run run water to the back and then you have like either a hose or if you want to get fancy i could put like whatever like shower head handle on it and um it kind of you just hook it to the door and the spreader width of the doors are actually the exact same size as a standard shower curtain that you could get at target or whatever so really nice if somebody gets one of these vehicles like you don't have to find an upholstery place to make yourself a new shower curtain. But basically they just magnetize with little like earth magnets with carabiners on them. And then they just hook to the outside. And in San Diego, it's very popular to have the outdoor shower because you know we, we build for a lot of like surfers and, and things like that. So it's a very common practice for them already. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, when you look at DIY builds, um, what are some common mistakes that you see that hopefully people can avoid by listening to this? <laughs> if you are not an electrician, if you have never been certified or anything with electricity, consult at least with somebody. Or I recommend hiring. I have seen very, very dangerous things. So to kind of cycle back my background i was in the navy for six years in the advanced electronic computer field so i'm well versed in electronics before i went into building bands um so that's just one thing i just don't recommend people tackling on their own if they've never done it before there's a ton of stuff on youtube but there are a million mistakes you can make that those videos will not show you. And those mistakes could burn down your van. God forbid, God forbid your idiot if that happened. So electrical is definitely a strikes a note with me a little bit. So. Yeah, for sure. And I do have people like writing to me and asking, like, I just need this component installed, or I need help with, with this part. How do people go about like finding someone to help with, with just small build projects instead of getting a whole custom build? There, there are builders out there that are willing to, you know, do like just an electrical system. You know, typically I, I would advise people against like just adding something to your existing electrical system, like, like presenting that to somebody. Um, I, I think it should be worded like, Hey, can you like go through my electrical system and add this piece? Because I've had to pretty much every electrical system that's come to my shop, I've had to fully overhaul. Um, and it, it's very unfortunate because I know they paid money to have that done or spent a lot of time doing it. And then they had to pay me to, to overhaul it, but it's just safety, safety, safety. So it, yeah, I have all your ducks in a row with electrical and plumbing before you go to anywhere. Definitely. And I'm curious, just off the top of my head, have you ever seen a bathtub in a van? Has anybody ever done that? <laughs> yeah. So I, I've seen uh, one of SoCal builders, uh, one of his first client builds, they they put a bathtub in. And I won't name names because I, I, I thought it was pretty ridiculous. Um, just like, you know, the client's always right. But that's something I think um, as professional company, you should really try to steer, um, the client in the correct direction. Um, the reason I think bathtubs are not a good idea is because you're looking at a tub and a tub to fit a human 
is about the size of a 55, 60 gallon water tank. Um, each gallon of water is eight pounds. So that kind of to fill up that tub. I mean, you would need a hundred gallon water tank in order to support a tub in, in, in a van. So if you're in a giant school layer or something where, where you could do stuff like that, yeah. like go for it. But I, it a be, I, yeah, it's just weight, weight is really the biggest, biggest issue I think with that. For sure. Sounds like practicality is a big one. Don't put clock quick tubs in your sprinters, please. <laughs> just go to a hot springs. That's what I would advise people. <laughs> Way easier. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah that, that's what's the point of having a mobile home if you can't travel to a hot spring too, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So what does the process look like with you? If someone was interested in building out uh, like a van with you and you working with them on the layout? Well, so with Sandy Vans, um, I kind of did all the layout work for you. I, I've designed a van that I think is very practical. And um, if I'm not the right builder for you because you don't like that layout, you can go get a custom build by all means. However, at Sandy Vans, we are offering, you know, very affordable, brand new Sprinter, um, fully built out, fully financed at 15 years. So it's just, yeah, I mean, the whole process to me, it, it's a lot easier to do it this way because lead times are much less. Um, my custom builds were taking four to six months and my Sandy Vans builds can be done in like two weeks. So it, it's, it's more about me being able to help more people. Um, and that's why I I dictate this layout so then I can provide you a van that I think will suit your needs faster. Very cool. And do are people choosing like the interior colors and stuff or it does it? Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. like if they want like crazy, like fancy lighting and, and, you know, they want a different kind of countertop and they have customizable attributes. Absolutely. And, and they do look very, they're CNC, but they don't look CNC because it's a very simple layout but um with all the lighting and you know i use real wood on the countertops and and all the areas that well i use real wood everywhere. but i'm just <laughs> all the areas that are high visual high traffic are they look custom and that's that's full goal is to still give people the, the ability to make their van the way they want it to but you know have let me do the work because i've been in the industry of telling you you're getting a diesel heater, you're getting like, you're getting this kind of diesel heater, you're getting this kind of water heater, you're getting this, you know, so I'm trying to do all the work for you, basically. Fantastic. So how can people find you on the internet if they want to work with you? Um, well, if you want a good laugh, you can follow me on Instagram at Sculpt Solutions. I, I do quite a bit of goofy stuff on there. And then um, if you want to book a build with me or even come down and check out the shop, um, I'd like you guys to visit www.sandyvans.com and um, hang out with us and check out our vans. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the summit. Um, anything else you wanted to say? Um, we also sell exterior products. No, I'm done with the sales pitch, but, um, yeah, I mean, if any of you have any questions that you want to come directly to me, I try my best to answer everybody on social media. So if you just want to DM direct, DM me directly at Sculpt Solutions, I'd be happy to try my best to help you out in any way I can. Um, but yeah, be paid, you know, cause I do get questions quite frequently. So. <laughs> Totally. Well, that's a great service you offer and hopefully people go check out your vans and thanks for all the amazing tips. Yeah. Thank you. for. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate this opportunity. Well, thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Wayward Home Podcast. Remember to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss the next episode. I'll see you next time.